blue team members, the very few. All right, so uh, we'll start out with a little introduction of who I am. Um, my name is Willie Delgioni. I'm a very random name on Twitter, if you feel like following me. Um, so I am a recent graduate of uh, Eastern Michigan University. I uh, enjoy playing soccer and watching it. Very few people that do that here. Um, Professional-wise, I'm actually a security consultant for uh, Viopoint. I uh, work on uh, monitoring SIM and vulnerability management. Currently, I do vulnerability management for various clients, and I've done uh, SIM monitoring in the past. Uh, moving on, uh, what is SIM? So uh, SIM is a combination of two things. Usually you hear uh, SIM, the name confused all over the place of SIM, SEM. Um, Actually, it's a combination of SIM and SEM. SEM, which is uh, security event management, which is usually uh, refers to real-time security monitoring. And uh, it requires usually correlation in real time with, with data that's being utilized from uh, people's organizations. Security information management usually uh, requires the same thing, but referring back to historical information. So that data has to be usually stored and correlated and aggregated somewhere. Um, but the uh, beauty when it comes to SIM is combining both of those two and uh, getting the same results in near, time, near real time, hopefully, and um, also going back and looking at historical information. And then you get security information and event management. So moving on. Um, so some people always think that they're actually ready for a SIM deployment. and we always start with, are you even ready for an actual SIM deployment? Do you actually have uh, processes in place? Do you have documentation in place within your environment? Do you have a incident response uh, or a forensic analysis team? Or do you actually have a SOC built out in your environment that is, uh, is ready for a, uh, a monitoring team? So um, there is the little meme. So um, there's a few approaches that uh, to consider when you're actually going for a uh, SIM deployment. Um, I usually uh, like to break it out in six things. Goes into investment, a scope, uh, the architecture, correlation, having use proper use cases, and actually utilizing metrics for your deployment. Uh, we'll go first and go into the investment piece. Um, before, uh, when you invest, you actually have to invest in a uh, process. So if you have an actual process, and you, then great. If you don't, you actually have to establish a process for your monitoring techniques, um, actually documenting on how you're going to detect intrusions or detect uh, compromising, compromises within your environment. And actually, uh, one more important thing is integration within other business units in your company. Um, another thing to consider is your actual um, Personnel. So uh, a, a proper SIM deployment usually requires a, uh, if you have a bigger scale environment, usually you have a subject matter expert, you have some analysts in the SOC, and you actually have management on top of both of those two. Um, if you are a smaller scale environment, usually um, you have multiple people being the SMEs and the analysts, and then someone else managing it, or the same person doing all those three. Um, so it really depends on the scale of the environment. Um, another thing is, uh, which is very important, which is the management of the SIM and the maintenance of it. So are you, if a, you're a bigger organization, you might want to take your SIM deployment in-house and manage everything there. Um, another thing you can utilize is a managed security service provider. Um, that's what my, the company that I work for does, Viapoint. So also, uh, probably one of my favorite techniques is actually utilizing a co-managed um, technique, which is actually having uh, inside personnel and actually having an MSSP combined to uh, utilize your SIM. So you can have some people doing some feeds and putting some logs in the SIM and actually having some people creating use cases for you and actually and having metrics and everything from both sides. And then that sets ex better expectations. I've seen it overall. Also, yeah, some, some things to consider is uh, return on investment. This is not the return on investment for financial data. So you're not putting a dollar and getting two bucks. This is what your uh, company wants. So if you have, you're going to be integrating within other business units, if you're actually 
going to reduce risk within your environment. You're, th those are uh, some things that you want you want return on. If you're actually going to prevent some uh, fraud or data exfiltration or any of those those sort of things. Moving on is uh, taking on your scope, which is, I believe, the most important part of the uh, SIM deployment. Um, before even deploying a SIM, uh, first thing that you have to do is uh, consider if you're prepared for it. If we, as, as I said earlier, um, set business goals uh, that you want your SIM to actually perform a year from now or two years from now. It doesn't happen right away, but it takes time to actually do it. If, you're actually, if your goal is to utilize uh, your SIM for log management or storage. That's probably uh, not the best option for utilization of SIM. Uh, I've seen people where they wanted uh, SIM deployment to be their uh, uh, lock server, and uh, usually that's not the purpose of a SIM deployment. Um, another thing would be integration within other business units, as I, as I said earlier. Um, one big thing to consider is uh, if you actually want to build or buy a SIM, um, Buying a SIM usually consists of buying an appliance, uh, then having to work with your inside personnel or vendors or MSSPs to utilize it, or you actually want to build one. Uh, building, I've never personally seen a successful built uh, SIM deployment at a large scale, so uh, if somebody's actually have something that's like that, I'd love to talk to you after the talk. So uh, I'd like to find out more about it. Um, your budget is uh, probably the, what's going to actually determine what kind of tool you use. I'll mention that a little bit later on in the talk. So if you're a if you're going to be deploying a sim, you can have a budget of uh, ten thousand bucks or actually a million dollars. I've seen deployments of sim go up to uh, one point five million dollars. So um, or you can have a small scale environment that that's going to have only twenty thousand dollars in in budget that you want to utilize. So that really determines what kind of uh, tool you use. So if you actually have a uh, SOC and you have personnel to manage your SIM, then something you want to invest in is probably like Curator or Splunk. Or if you have a smaller environment and you want to utilize something like AlienVault, which kind of gives you like an all-in-one sort of package. Um, there's all other SIMs out there. Um, I know there's no ArcSight logo, so if anybody utilizes Ar ArcSight, please don't hammer me over that. <laughs> um, integrating, uh, the SIM would probably be the uh, business goal that you set for a long-term uh, goal, uh, something like integrating with your vulnerability management teams, integrating with your uh, uh, incident response team. Are you actually, can you actually pull logs out of your SIM? Can you um, utilize it for forensic efforts? Um, other, other things is uh, Actually integrating with open source intelligence, um, not talking about something like um, ThreatBot where you have things just come up on the map. If you actually have some forums online, um, integrate with VirusTotal to see uh, if you can actually catch malware and detect uh, based upon hashes and stuff like that. Um, move, moving on uh, would be the architecture of the SIM. So it, it's you actually have to have to know what to, you're going to be actually monitoring within your SIM. So if you have an asset list, it's great to define what you're going to be monitoring. So you can actually whitelist or blacklist assets, or you can determine not to monitor some uh, some assets within environments. I know some there is some. Uh, I, I've seen clients have have to monitor some uh, AS400s, which was a pain to utilize. People still actually use that out there, so it, it's still out there and people actually want to see what's going on with it. So you actually have to determine what you're going to be monitoring and everything like that. Moving on, if you if you are a bigger scale environment, you'd probably have multiple physical locations that you actually want to monitor. So you might want to have to deploy a sensor elsewhere if you have something in Michigan or you have something in Texas and you actually have to collide those two together. Um, if you have multiple businesses within one, if you're in a hospital deployment and you have doctor offices that you're, you have to monitor the doctors and see what they're, what they're doing. For example, uh, there is um, inside uh, Michigan healthcare providers that utilize doctors within the hospital. So those are all offices that need to be monitored. Um, acquisitions. Um, 
companies usually bigger bigger organizations go through acquisitions uh, yearly I've seen it and you usually inherit every vulnerability and malware and everything that comes along with that with that company so th those are things to consider so if you're if you're going and getting a, another company some things is if you're actually going to plan ahead of time to see what you're going to deploy within your sim to see a little sample of what that environment entails. Um, what to actually forward within a sim deployment some some stuff to consider would be uh, some logs some uh, uh, network flows and some access changes within the environment uh, we'll go a little bit uh, deeper into that um, correlation for sim is probably the uh, most important part and uh, what the main purpose of it is so some things to uh, actually uh, Consider forwarding. Um, I know everybody says log all the things and forward all the things when it comes to SIM deployments, but uh, there are some things you could do for intelligence fees, such as subscri subscription fees, blacklists, open source intelligence, intelligence sharing forums. Um, for network activity, it's always go good to forward your firewalls, your email logs, web, DNS server, your malware and as analysis, which was really your AV hits, um, some IDS and IPS, and uh, some NetFlow, uh, and also some host monitoring with uh, endpoint detection and some authentic authentication type stuff like Active Directory and uh, LDAP information. Um, we'll go into a little bit what can get you your best bank for your buck. And uh, so when you're starting a new deployment, what you can actually do so you can actually get a decent uh, picture of your environment and what it has in there. Um, one thing I want to point out, which is uh, one of the things to monitor within your environment, which is fire, file integrity monitoring, FIM. So um, you can always have critical files within an environment which you don't want to be uh, modified. If, and also you can utilize it for your c compliance and your data exfiltration. Um, I've seen uh, FIM, one big usage for it is for PCI compliance and seeing actual critical uh, credit card related files being monitored on there. Um, I've seen uh, where a file being created and being from uh, one kilobyte to going to 500 megs and being uploaded on a Dropbox port. That's something that you actually want to uh, determine. That's probably not uh, an intended use for a file to be uploaded like that. Um, that goes with data exfiltration a little bit. Um, Moving on, your correlation would be uh, getting all your firewall logs. You can get your best bank for your buck if you're actually getting, like, let's say, for example, your authentication server, your firewall logs, um, uh, your uh, virus scanner, putting all those together, your uh, maybe your wireless controller, and actually putting those and seeing what is happening within your environment. Then you'll kind of see, have a picture of your actual environment, what is being out there, what your users are doing, and all that sort of stuff. There's a lot more um, stuff you can actually forward. Um, some use cases uh, that are being utilized within SIM, um, which be, could be authentication tracking, for example, with brute force uh, authentications. If you have multiple lo login failures within users, that's something that you actually want to uh, check for sims do usually have a plug and play option I know when you plug in a sim usually has some rules created within there uh, which is uh, this is stuff that is considered simple for sims but it is always good to be actually still monitoring it um, actually validating traffic for users or your network if you see a bunch of your users utilizing uh, Dropbox or if they're on iTunes all day they can actually have a uh, clog up your network and seeing actually users go from user one to being an admin um, that's something that you want to actually uh, watch for within your environment um, some use cases to actually consider for uh, for a sim deployment was a was actually uh, detecting on un unidentified assets I know this is not within uh, logging but if you actually have a uh, very firm architecture within your environment you can actually see if a rogue device went on your network or a rogue access point got plugged in if you're actually monitoring for the right things. Um, some things to consider is uh, when it comes to network spike, spikes, if you're actually utilizing NetFlows, um, that's something that you're able to uh, get. Um, 
I know within uh, QRadar, uh, IBM SIM, you can actually have uh, what they have is uh, Q flows, and which really goes into uh, all the way down to the application layer and actually sees what you're able, what's going on within the network. So you'll see if somebody uh, is utilizing things that they're not supposed to. Um, changes to critical files would be one of the most important things that I'd say if you're watching for registry files where uh, usually malware likes to hide, that's something that you're um, you'd like to do and also um, baseline analysis which would be uh, if you actually know what your network looks like some and then if you have a uh, a number that you know within events that is happening within the network then if you see a network spike you'll actually be able to tell what's going on if you're forwarding the correct things. Um, automating your sim would be something that you can that would help your uh, detection and prevention methods of uh, creating tickets within the environment when something pops up. If somebody uh, logs in on a uh, domain controller and that's not an authorized user, that's something to actually be alert on. Or automating alerts within reaction, having it go to the correct teams to react upon. Um, it can be actually utilized for, for not only the SOC but other IT infrastructure teams. Tuning your sims. When you first plug in a sim, you'll actually realize that your environment is a very loud environment and uh, there's users doing all sorts of things. Um, you always want to start out with uh, tuning down the false positives. You'll get some uh, lock, lockout failures. It's just users typing in a cr incorrect passwords. Um, baselining and actually being able, able to determine what's going on and you'll be able to determine what's normal and abnormal traffic within the environment. And also uh, that goes in within the uh, data spikes also. Moving on to metrics. Um, usually without a, if you don't have metrics, most likely your management would probably not approve of your SIM deployment. So um, some metrics to consider would be utilizing the events that are happening within the environments. The uh, events per second, the average event, uh, and the maximum and the processed events within a sim, not every event within that's going to come in within a sim is going to uh, have an alert within it. So you actually want to see what you're actually processing and your, your realization within the sim. Um, you can overload sims if you have way too many events coming in within your environments. You're, if you utilize an appliance and then you don't have the correct scope for it, then you can actually have a... Uh, you can have your data storage filled up fairly quickly with events that you're not even knowing what they are. Um, alerts triggered within a sim that goes within the uh, process events and having alerts that, that come up for your teams to investigate. Some uh, other reasons for met metrics would be utilizing it for, I know PCI and COBE has a bigger part to utilize, of utilization for sims. Um, I know the access for the credit card related assets and uh, file changes is a big few couple of those and also for COVID there is uh, if you're actually monitoring application logs and your application usage and if there is attempted logons and failed logons within your application service that's something that you want to uh, see for those compliance reasons. There's other plenty of compliance that you actually uh, you can utilize SIM for. Um, some metrics to, con uh, to consider would be uh, your monitoring coverage. Um, one of the things that people will see if you have, uh, if you're plugging in two uh, assets within a SIM deployment, then your your environment is very quiet. You're not getting a full picture. If you just have a firewall logging to a SIM, you're not going to get a full picture of what's happening within the uh, within the actual network. Um, some people knock these down, but I think top top ten metrics are very important to have. So if you're actually having see some Top 10 metrics such as uh, the most attacker places, the most attack host, um, some of the uh, IPs that you can actually utilize to blacklist with, that are hitting your environment. Um, and then also your utilization efforts within your sim. So if you actually have analysts that are uh, monitoring threats, how long is it taking those analysts to, to detect and protect against the things that they're finding? Um, inter integrating with uh, your business units, ha having metrics for them, such as the uh, vulnerability management teams, you can have uh, vulnerability management and correlate within other other detection rules to have a 
a better response time. Um, your incident response process, you can have, um, in your forensics analysis, you can actually have logs that are going in your SIM that you can utilize for those uh, business units. Um, so, so I want to talk about something everybody talks about with logging all the things. Um, for the best bang for your buck, I'd say if you have a new SIM deployment, I'd always recommend for you to scope out what you actually want from your env environment and actually what you want to do with it. So, and if you can start, you can really start light within your environment. Just log in your domain controller, your firewall, and then um, move on from there. The more you uh, types of logs or types of uh, net flows you can forward, the better picture that you're going to get within the environment. You, and then you can plug that in with other external sources that um, that can help sim feeds. Um, there is, I know, um, uh, IBM Alien Vault. Um, Splunk has some great fees that you can utilize. Uh, Virus Total, that's something you can upload your uh, hashes to to see if they actually have a hit on Virus Total. Um, some things, that's some of the things that you should actually uh, be able to monitor. Um, also, investing within a SIM um, that actually uh, determines what type of SIM you're going to get. There's some uh, SIM tools that have drawbacks, wh whether you can actually uh, do some vulnerability analysis to some. Some of them you can't. Um, some SIMs you can actually utilize for more than just uh, a SIM. I know, for example, for Splunk, you can actually utilize it for malware analysis. Uh, I've seen uh, some, there's some applications that you can utilize for Splunk that has more than, uh, more uses than just a SIM. Um, for exa another example, for with Alien Vault, you can, you can do uh, vulnerability assessments. Uh, you can actually scan your environment for uh, vulnerabilities and correlate those vulnerabilities within alerts that are happening within your environment. Um, so that's some of the examples that I have. And uh, really, that's, that's really all I have. Um, if you guys have some questions, I'd love to answer some. Mm -hmm. With uh, incident response, is that what you're mentioning? Mm -hmm. So within actually utilizing two different SIM tools uh, to utilize within each other, I've, uh, I've deployed two SIM tools and they actually uh, would go against each other and uh, not actually talk well. So uh, some things to consider is actually separating their, uh, I wouldn't forward the same logs to two SIMs. So if you actually have uh, one portion has a very, se like the segregating the actual usage of both of those. So then you'll be able to not have them butt heads together. That's the best option I, I would have me. If, if you're actually having to uh, integrate within your incident response, I, I know what you mean. So if you're actually looking for a user that's, uh, that was be being infected, something that you'd look at is the, uh, uh, your AV hits on that user. Then you probably could look at the, uh, uh, if he has some authentication failures, what, what firewall at, uh, net traffic he's had. It, within utilizing two tools, um, it's, it's going to be a bit harder to, to grab those two together. Uh, obviously, so if you could um, grab those one one little thing from another and then kind of uh, have to paint the picture, it would be sort of a manual, a more of a manual effort, more than if you're going to utilize two sim tools. Yeah, so uh, th that happens a lot within uh, vulnerability management. So if you uh, detect something on an environment, and then you go and uh, tell them this is this is on your environment. The uh, we saw this result on it. So they'll always uh, hit back and say we're not actually vulnerable. So uh, one thing is actually to have the results of how the uh, vulnerability was caught. The best thing is if usually with DLL files, if they'll have a DLL being uh, left over from a 
misconfiguration of an uninstalling a device. That's something that you're that you're able to see from there. Mm. And they say, oh, that's our FTP server, that's our you know, Unix box for this or that. Or, and they say, we don't care about that because it's inside. How do you, how do you socialize that with your team and say, no, you need to look at this because that's not normal traffic? Yeah, so uh, one thing you'd be is uh, best option, if you can go straight to the analyst, um, and if you have an FTP server or SSH server utilizing uh, to each other, if you can go to them and if they're not, uh, going to respond to you well if you uh, you can do two things you can tune out what's happening which is probably not the best approach if you can actually rule out that there is nothing bad happening I, I, obviously the recommendation would be to tune out what's uh, that would be considered as a false positive if uh, you're not getting a well response from um, that that team and if you give him given them reasoning uh, why this is bad then the probably the best thing is to escalate the process I know it, it'll probably be bad on your uh, it'll look bad on you, but that's usually the best case scenario that is to go to uh, management to uh, and have it go trickle down to those. Any other questions? I'm sorry, I, I can't hear you. So for the, the data logs from the from say, Windows server? Uh -huh. Um, really no preference uh, to, to what goes on and really see what uh, the SIM tool handles best. Um, uh, I've, I've seen uh, within QRadar deployments, uh, it can take both of them. It, it really depends on the server also that you're running. So if, uh, if the server that you're running handles uh, doing both well, just do what really works best. There is really uh, no preference at a lot of things that uh, you do within a sim deployment goes upon uh, usually sometimes trial and error also so you can uh, utilize that method um, any other questions Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've actually seen a, uh, so are you talking about uh, having it create a ticket for you and having somebody respond to it? Yeah, I've, I've never, to be honest with you, I've never had to utilize one of those, but I've seen where uh, automation goes in within creating tickets and having actual teams respond to it, but within it having to create a uh, an automatic fire rule, I have not seen that personally. I'd love to talk about it with you after the talk. Any other questions? All right. So, uh,